Warning, this video contains images of toys getting some pretty severe crash tests. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of toys which I think are fairly impressive and they're from the toy company called Dickie Toys. If you don't know Dickie Toys, well maybe you'll know them by the end of this video. This is not an ad for Dickie Toys. Dickie Toys have never spoken to me, but I will give you the evidence of why I think Dickie Toys are pretty cool as we go along. Maybe a great way to kick off this video is coming and speak about this fire engine right here. Okay, the fire engine on screen is my son's fire engine. I'm pretty sure it was purchased around three Christmases ago. It's had a lot of play in the house. And as far as I know, there's only one piece missing and that's a little cap there for the water reserve because this fire truck actually can pump some water. This is a dicky toy. I didn't realize this until I had a bit of a closer scrutiny at it. But some people might say, well, you can tell by the wheels and tires because they do seem to have this distinctive style or detail to their wheels. This fire truck features some nice moving parts. Of course, the ladder comes up like that. It also extends out. It extends out a long way. Whoa! And you know what? That hasn't broken. It, funny, it felt fairly flimsy, but I'll tell you what, these are actually stronger than what you would think. The other thing about this toy is it's got a bit of lights and sounds. It's going to get noisy. I think that's enough of the sounds, we'll just let that one burn out. It's also got these nice details where you can extend these legs down and stabilise the fire engine when it's got its ladder up, because that's really important. And from memory, I paid $20 from Kmart for this toy. It came with some other toys in the pack, it wasn't just the fire engine by itself. I can't recall if it came with any figures, but if you do have a fireman figure, I got one just here, this isn't part of the toy, but you can sort of sit the fireman in there, and you can really go to town and pretend you're putting out fires. I mean, this toy is just fantastic. And it's funny, I didn't do much of a look into this toy until I thought to myself, wow, this toy has stood the test of time. My son has punched it a lot. And then I took a closer look and look what it says there, Dicky Toys. So let's start ticking some boxes about this toy. Here is a toy which is very inexpensive. Here is a toy which has got some fantastic detailing. Here is a toy with some fantastic playability. And here is a toy which has stood the test of time of my son punishing it over the last few years. This is what the underneath of that fire engine looks like. It's got hard rubber wheels on this one. This is where the batteries are. That's where it says Dickie Toys, made in China. But you know what, because I've had this fire engine, I understand what it's been through in our house. It's taught me that Dickie Toys know how to make a great toy. Well, this next one is the Dickie Holiday Camper. This is large. It's basically 300 millimeters or a ruler's length. Oh, that's 12 inches, so this is a big toy. That fire engine was big as well. I should have put a ruler over it. This toy came to me via the charity shop. I've had this for at least five years. Really, it was my daughter's toy. This has got detail all over it. This toy has been enjoyed by both of my children. And, re and remember, this toy has gone through another family before me. So this sort of just shows you how these toys stand the test of time. What is a bit of shame here, I don't have the accessories that this toy came with. All I've got is basically the bare camper. I think it's missing a little uh, rear view mirror there. But as far as I can tell, this toy is basically intact. And if I hop onto the Dickie toy website, we start to see the grandeur that this toy would have had when it was brand new. What I really like about this toy is just how many little bits and pieces move. There's so much detail in these toys. Children love details like this. I mean, look at that there. That's the, where the bikes would have been stored, I believe. I don't have the bikes. They never came with it. I think something clipped on there. But the best part is when you open up inside here, boy oh boy, then this toy really starts to come alive. And my daughter used to love putting all sorts of toys in here. It was funny. She put the squinkies in there and later on the trash bags. It didn't matter what size they were. They just seemed to enjoy living in this toy. Come on guys, how many toys do you have which have its own little toilet? And there's a nicely detailed kitchen. And I mean this just replicates real life so well and I think that's really important when children want to play. I mean look at the dashboard details down there. There's a dashboard I think most other camper van toys would never ever bother putting in those sorts of details. And when you're on holidays you never know when you're going to break down so you better have access to your engine. Taking a look underneath, there's some nice rubber tyres there. The friction movement in this toy doesn't work anymore. That's one thing which doesn't work. But underneath, it's well not really well detailed. There is an exhaust pipe there and a muffler box. But I tell you what, considering this toy 
has been through, well, two families that I know of, it's done very well. The next toy in this Dicky Toy Marathon is called the City Liner and it's a tram. And what's really unusual is seeing a tram toy, especially in Australia. I was quite surprised with this toy. And this toy is actually the one which had me investigating exactly who is Dicky Toys. It's actually quite a long toy. If I just throw in a ruler there, 12 inches there, all 300 millimeters. So it's actually longer than that. But what's interesting about this toy is this is my son, son's uh, tram here. He threw all the Lego minifigure people in there and that's actually quite interesting because the size of this toy is very similar to, and let me just reach over and grab it, there's a Lego train and you can start to see the similarity in size. Sure it's similar in size to Lego train but the Lego train has its own dedicated Lego track gauge system. This tram though from what I can work out has no track and it just has these little tiny wheels to go along the ground. This Dicky Toy Tram has the ability to bend around corners, but that degree of bend isn't that great. In true Dicky Toy style, it's got some lovely little features, one of those, whatever they're called. It's got doors that open and close. Wow, look at that. Hello, I'm a tram. Oh, and this feature is very Dicky Toys. And this was my son's tram, and he's not very careful with his toys. It's been driven around the home many times. I've seen it outside. He's obviously loaded up with Lego minifigures, and I know it's tough. I can do this. And what's coming out of there? <laughs> the Lego minifigures. But this is a great toy. They're tough. I mean, what else can I say? So that's where those minifigures got to. They've been in there for months, but there's something still in this, making a whole lot of sound. Let's see if I can get it out and work out what it is. Oh, that, oh, there they are. It was a maraca. No wonder why it's rattling like mad. And before we leave these spectacular trams, I will point out the price to you that I paid. And it was from David Jones of all places, $24.95. Which is interesting because David Jones is normally a place you would associate with the higher end of the market. But I think that's a pretty good price considering the very high prices of toys in Australia. Oh, the next one are these two lovely Mini Cooper cars. The bottom of the box is telling me $12 from the reject shop. Both of these toys are actually my sons. I've had a fair bit of play. They've a little bit knocked around in the sense they've got scratches and stuff, but I don't think anything has fallen off them. Even though this one is in its box, it's had a fair bit of rough play. Let's take a look at the beautiful details in these cars. Okay, well obviously this has been played with because the Dicky number plate is almost gone there. Under there is the engine. Nice detailing. I don't think anything is broken off this toy. My son is a Punisher of toys, I can tell you that. Look at that, the doors open, the doors have got details on the inside. Look at the interior there, beautifully detailed. I mean, to get a toy with this sort of detailing at such a low price is actually very difficult to find. And detail costs money in the toy realm, and it's very hard to find toys of good detail without, you know, wrenching your wallet. There's the back of it, it says Dicky underneath, it's also beautiful. I mean, that's what I like about it, that's what children get excited about when they see things that start to emulate real life. And sadly, you just don't see enough of it in the toy realm. The front wheels do steer, and there's also a little disc in there like a disc brake. And there's a better shot of the wheels being set to a steering direction. But best of all, these toys have got those friction motors. Wow, well, the crash. And here's a black one, it's one with the roof, and I've opened up everything so you can see all the details in this car. And you know what I'm thinking? is when I see a little toy car like this and it's got so many little bits and bobs that I could strip away and make fly off, I could put a little bomb in this one and blow it up and make it look like a real car. As long as I'm shooting with some high speed video, I'm pretty sure I could emulate something that looked fairly realistic. And what is really interesting is here's underneath or the inside of the roof and there are the sun visors there, the rear vision mirror. And it looks like a little light thing in between, but what toys would ever bother putting that sort of detail in? So there you go, two toy cars with a ton of detailing and at the right price. And I might put this one away for another day and blow it to smithereens. I just hope my son doesn't notice that all of a sudden it's gone. Next up is a beautiful looking garbage truck and it's got some functions on this which are air powered. I can't wait to get this out of the box and take a really good look at what's going on here. This is one of those toys with that little secret panel that you pull up from underneath to get it out. I'll say the word unboxing, I hope the computer can hear that word unboxing, unboxing, unboxing. 
Looks like you take these, you turn them, and the toy will hopefully come out. In theory. It's out. This toy cost me $19.95. I'm a bit curious to know how much this toy is if you've seen it in America. There it is. It is spectacular and garbage trucks like this are a hugely popular toy with children. I'm going to add to this toy some of my little trashies. Well, for many children, watching dump trucks work is one of the big exciting things that happens to them at home. When I was younger, I used to enjoy watching cement mixers. I used to be puzzled by how did the cement seemingly go uphill and come out the back. Uh, and also when I was younger, I used to go into town uh, and watch the machines work uh, digging holes. But these days, well, they don't seem to cut out areas for you to watch those machines because these days construction sites are dangerous. I dare say this is the business end of the garbage truck and it's got a nice little bin that you can clip on the back here and you turn the knob there and it will load those trashies in the back there. And once it's loaded, you just lift this up and it comes away. And what I've done is I've actually pre-loaded this with a whole ton of trash pack, guys. There's a fair bit of weight in there. And look what this thing can do next. Just like a real garbage truck, this has got a hydraulic system in there. This one is air-powered. And if I keep pressing this, that back piece is going to rise up. And the trashies are going to come tumbling out. And then there's this little switch here that'll bring it back down. I'm pretty sure there'd be lots of children that just like to pump it up and let it come back down. Pump it up and let it come back down. And one more, let's pump it up and let's bring it back down. And if I take a closer look, you can see in there the piston that is doing all the work and lifting the back of this truck up. What is a bit curious, this garbage truck is a little bit less detailed than some of the other toys that I've showed. You can see the airlines there that power that piston. Maybe I should give this to my son for a while and see if he can break it up. But there's also other sorts of trucks in this air pump series. There are the other trucks in the series, of course. That was the garbage truck. There's a dump truck. There's one of those things, whatever they're called, and whatever that's called. Okay, that was the garbage truck. We'll let it drive on, and we'll look at something which is very awesome, and that's this fire truck. And we're going to see a whole lot more dicky detail when we get into this one. Well, here comes the price tag. What do I pay for this fire truck? $39.95. That's $5 off, $40. By taking a look at the back of the box on this fire truck, it looks like it can do a whole number of things. And it also looks like it pumps some water. Oh, yeah. Coming in for a bit of unboxing shot. I'm saying the word unboxing again. Unboxing, unboxing, unboxing. Does it just wrench out? Wrench. Oh, yeah. There's this incredible notice in every language in the world. There's all these languages there. It's only saying one short sentence here, and there's another whole side of it. Every language in the world is represented here. And it's basically saying, well, this is an electrical item, this toy, because it's got batteries in it, and to recycle it, don't just chuck it in the bin. And that's an interesting read. It's a bit of a European idea, I feel. I think it relates back to where Dickie's from. And the interesting thing is, in Australia, the idea of even recycling a battery is a bit of a foreign idea. The funny thing is, if you go to Aldi, and these are Aldi batteries, you'll find a bin there to recycle batteries. And I sort of say that to you because of the few European people that I know and I speak to, and they get a bit of a shock in Australia for the fact that um, we seemingly do so little um, recycling, particularly when it comes to electronics things. If I can get this thing out, it's going to fight me all the way. Come on, you lovely looking fire truck. I'm free. Well, here's the fire engine. It's 300 millimeters in length or 30 centimeters in metric. And if I spin that round, it's going to be 12 inches. If you're an imperial person, I'll tell you what, it's impressive. I've got all the doors and things hanging out on this fire truck now. And it looks like it's about to, you know, basically go and help at a fire. It's a really, really impressive toy. And I'm thinking, you know, $40, that's pretty good value because in Australia, $40 doesn't buy you much in the toy department. And I'm pretty sure that any boy who received this would have a whole lot of fun. What's really neat is that all these little areas that um, can go inside there and you can close down the doors. These trays at the back here are actually loose, but I can't get them out. I think they just come out a little bit. Uh, but I know one thing, the door certainly comes down. There's some nice detail at the back here, and I think that's where they control the pump. And looking on the other side, it's all sorts of things in here which are nice and busy. There's a hose reel up here, all sorts of little boxes, utility things, a couple of fire extinguishers. I think they're just in there for looks, but I think this generator here does come out. I hope I'm right. 
So there's a little generator and you can imagine it powering up other things around the fire scene. And when you're done, it so easily just clips back. And don't forget to close the doors. There's plenty of seats in there for firemen. There's also a nice little detailed front cab. Up on the roof, there's this ladder here which is stuck onto this utility box. There's also a long extendable ladder that can be taken off the top of the fire truck. And that ladder extends to just under double the length of the fire truck. There's a work light that extends and turns on. I mean, who's not impressed with that? And there's also some buttons to get some fire energy sounds. Oh yeah. But possibly the best feature is the one we'll need some water for. You can't put out a fire unless you got some water. In it goes. Don't know how much it takes, probably see it flooding over any minute. It takes a fair bit of water, I'm quite surprised. Let's just pretend for a moment that our dear friend Mudkip is on fire. It came about two rulers lengths away, it's about 24 inches from Mudkip. Let's spray him. Oh, I'm a bit high there, but I put it down a bit. Down a bit more. Oh, getting in. Whoa, he's getting saturated. Yeah, old Mudkip is getting soaked. If he was on fire, I dare say the fire is out. Whoa, it actually goes through the water once it starts spraying, I tell you. You can dish it out, Mudkip, but can you take it? That's the big question. Let's take a look underneath, because I'm curious, I know you would be. That's what's under there. Big double chunky rubber tires on the back here. These are rubber ones, they're not solid. And this rubber on the front there, it's also got one of those, I don't know, dynamo motors, whatever you want to call them in there. So you can push it along and it'll keep going. Very interesting, and there's some batteries in the back here. Very interesting indeed. Well, there it is, the Dickey fire truck. It's got plenty of fire truck features on there. I think any young boy would really enjoy this toy. Lots of little details. I like the detail side of it. What is interesting, this is actually very similar to the sorts of fire trucks you would see if you came to Australia. I'm not sure whether we have this model over here. Maybe someone out there can tell me. It's well worth jumping on the internet and seeing what these guys do. There's pump trucks. That's a bit like the garbage truck that I showed. They do Disney cars, which I didn't know. Looks like they do RC stuff as well. Disney planes. And it looks like that's an RC tractor, which sort of looks very interesting. It's a very interesting read on the About Us page, and it talks about how the company was formed, and it's a conglomeration of a number of companies over the years, and it's grown and grown. It says at the bottom here, the group's product range now comprises of over 4,000 items. A modern 120,000 square meter logistics center in Germany alone distributes toys all over the world. What if they've got jobs for me? Job offers, it says here. Maybe they've got a position for, you know, a 40-something burnt-out person who can talk toys all day long. Oh, it looks like they need young people if I look at that picture. Damn it. Well, I'm just on the Dicky Toys website product range, and it's quite impressive. They do a lot of stuff. There's some things there that I now recognise as air pump trucks, and that's the Kids Mate range. A lot of the toys looked at in this video was from that range. And as I keep scrolling down, they do RC stuff. A bit curious what their RC stuff is like. Maybe you can tell me if you've got it. But there's one thing down the bottom here that I didn't know was Dickie Toys until I saw it on their website. And that's that Lightning McQueen right there. Oh, now that I've looked around, I've actually got two Lightning McQueens from Dickie Toys. They're both remote controlled. There's that lovely chrome one there. And I'm actually collecting Lightning McQueens now. It's a bit of a secret. The secret's out, isn't it? I've got a lot of Lightning McQueens. I'm going to try and do a big collection like my Thomas collection. Look at that down there. Dickie. And there's this beautiful large one. And I mean, Dickie toys seem to revel in large scale toys. This one looks amazing. And lo and behold, Dickie. I do remember picking up this Lightning McQueen from Toys R Us. It was the last one there. The box is a bit beaten up and it had a reduced price on it. And I didn't write the price. Normally I write the price under the box. I didn't do that. I might have to go back through my receipts. But for memory, it actually wasn't that expensive. As for this little one here, once again, I can't remember it being expensive, but I just like the fact that it's chrome. It looks spectacular. And like I said, I'm going to try and amass one of the largest Lightning McQueen collections there is on the planet. That's my goal. But mum's a word. Shh, don't tell anyone else I'm making a huge collection of Lightning McQueens, or they might get a little bit funny. Oh, there's this other dicky toy that I've got, and it's called a City Train. 
How about that? I was going to do a comparison of this train versus those trains called power trains. Or someone said to me, they're actually called power city trains now, Leo. Well, maybe they are. Um, all I know is that this was a fine for me at Toys R Us. I think it makes this circuit here. It cost $40. And I think it'd be pretty interesting to see this train up against those trains called power trains. Oh yeah, well this one's still in box, isn't it? You know what that means, don't you? It's a fan prize. I'm going to choose someone when I put this video together and put the title up on the screen. Whoever's name is up there on screen at the moment is the winner of that. But I'll also throw in... <gasps> wait for it, guys. The absolutely amazing Tim Tam Chocolicious Bites, the best naughty food on the planet. I would not eat stuff like that anymore because that stuff, well... It's a bit rich, the best way of saying it. Plus, I'll also throw in, you know what it's going to be? The amazing stretching catapult chicken. The thing that has made my channel famous. That single toy there. If you can't receive this prize, please tell me. I've actually got a few things down in the garage that people have not got back to, to claim. And I'm thinking now, if people aren't prepared to tell me if they want it or not, it just goes back into the pool and I will choose someone else at a later date. But whoever's name was up on the screen there, congratulations, that is your prize. Well, I've got the real toy tester here. I wonder how long these are going to last. Do you like these ones? Yes. Yeah, of course you do. Who wouldn't like these? Maybe we'll come back and we'll see if these toys get trashed by the ultimate toy tester. Oh, he's getting right into it. Oh, watch out, he's found that water button. Whoa-hoo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how long these toys are going to last. Looks like there's been a crash already. Don't worry if there's a fire, you can put that fire out. Look at him go. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness me. The toy tester is in town. Doesn't look good. Oh my goodness me. What a stack. I think we're resetting for another spectacular crash. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure these toys can take it from what I've seen. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. The sound of toys crunching. One more. So what do you think, Dicky Toys, good or bad? Please tell me. I reckon they're good. I've seen enough evidence of them being fairly robust and lasting the punishment that my children dig out. But it's funny the word Dicky is an interesting name for a company because in Australia if you say something's Dicky, it sort of means it's not quite right, there's something wrong, it's a little bit Dicky. Well anyway, there's a bit of trivia there for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making this one. I love those toys. As always, thank you for watching and... Bye for now. Well, rule is lengthy. There. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Children love these sorts of details. I think something would have clipped on there, but the real bonus is when you open it up inside. Man, you wait to see. This is like living. A oh. You better have access to your engine if I can get it up. Oh, there they go, they open up, right, Look, blah, blah, blah. It bends, and you know what, they're pretty tough. That was Lego flying out of it. <laughs> it wasn't a toy. It's still in one piece. A shame, though, the Lego minifigures have bitten the dust. Let's crash! Ooh! Next up in this very dicky video is this beautiful dump truck. It's not a dump truck, it's a damn blah blah. I suppose this is.
Oh, dear idea. To close the doors. Oh, I'm a bit high there. Let me push it down a bit. Oh, there we go. He's getting soaked, or something's getting soaked. Oh, there we go. I'm getting in now. I've actually got two Lightning McQueens from Dickie Toys. I'm actually collecting Lightning, Lightning, blah, blah. Oh, I can't talk any good today. Ha 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 ha!